Let's match your pick. <laughs> <laughs> it's done purposely. <laughs> You're up and running. I'm so nervous. I don't know if I can meet the 20 minutes. I think it's shorter than that. Yeah, well, your time starts now. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Um, hi, my name is Fauzia Saada Abdul Halim. I'm a senior lecturer in IT uh, and training coordinator at Academy Pangajian Bahasa UITM, a U public university in Malaysia. And I'm also Google Education Certified Trainer. Uh, today, I'm going to share with you how I gamify my classrooms using leaderboards. Um, in gamification for education, several design elements or game elements are used to improve uh, productivity, uh, engagement or learning, uh, such as uh, badges, uh, progress bars, challenges, quests, missions, and leaderboards. So before we get into details, first let's define what leaderboards are. So leaderboards are one of the many design elements of uh, gamification. Uh, it is defined as a visual display that ranks players according to their accomplishments. Uh, basically, uh, used to track uh, uh, accomplishments. Uh, it is the simplest form of, uh, in simplest form, a leaderboard is a high score listings. It can be great, uh, not, not grades, but um, XP points or some sort of points. Uh, leaderboards indicate who performs the best in a certain activity and a great way to stimulate um, healthy competition. Uh, and the main purpose of implementing it in an educational setting is to boost uh, engagement. Another good uh, thing about leaderboard is that students, they can use um, their rankings or their position on the leaderboard and assess their own performance amongst uh, their classmates, thus motivate them to explore, um, engage in activities so that they can be um, at the top because it provides them with a sense of accomplishment. And some study says that it is some sort of a social status as well. So note that the key word here is motivation because um, why do we do the things that we do? What drives our be uh, behavior? Uh, motivation. Motivation is a basic element of students' learning. Intrinsic motivation is considered a core variable in gamified environments. To boost intrinsic motivation, uh, we build on the self-determination theory that stresses the importance of fulfilling three core psychological needs, uh, the needs for autonomy, competence, and relatedness. In gamified say, uh, setting, autonomy happens when players choose what ac activities that they want to carry out, thus giving them the choice, uh, you know, uh, to do what they want to do or, uh, you know, what they want to learn. Uh, competence is defined as abilities, proficiencies, or skills that are necessary to reach a goal, a specific goal that is set out. Um, with the gaming mechanics found in leaderboards, immediate feedback is given through student scores or rankings um, on the results of the activities that they've did, uh, they've done. Uh, these game mechanics in leaderboards support intrinsic motivation and mastery of knowledge and skills. Uh, so lastly, relatedness uh, refers to the sense of connection with other people with their classmates, especially when they see that their classmates, uh, uh, you know, their classmates' performance, uh, they compare and they share uh, their progress. So when you have all these uh, three core needs, you will get students who are intrinsically motivated and ready to play, um, ready to explore, engage in, in, in whatever activities for the inherent fun of it, for the challenge of it, and for the excitement of doing so. And I believe Leaderboards does all of these things. So this is the leaderboard that I have created using Google Sheets. Um, I, I don't know how to do all those fancy uh, leaderboards. I'm just using the simplest um, uh, Google Sheets um, because previously I tried gamifying my classrooms using Kahoot, Quizzes, uh, Classcraft. However, because every semester I get new classes and different subjects, uh, it's taxing for me to create new sets of questions, uh, new games, um, uh, new challenges, cracking my head. How do I gamify these subjects? So uh, again, like I say, it's not fancy. Um, the, the, the leaderboards that I, that I have here, uh, it's not as fancy as you've seen out there. So I find, but I find using this leaderboard uh, format is sustainable for me. Um, easier to access and key in XP points after every classes. So what you see here, 
in the first is the first page of the leaderboard. Uh, subsequent pages um, in the Google Sheet um, are basically descriptions of the activities and XP points. Um, as you can see here, uh, uh, these are the gaming elements that are used. Um, rankings, so you can see uh, the top five are highlighted. Um, this is because um, I told the students that, uh, you know, uh, when they collect XP points uh, for the 14 week that they are in the semester, um, um, I promise some sort of reward uh, towards the end um, of that, this, that semester. And then I do have a progress bar as well. So you can see, um, you know, how they are participating in class. You can see some of them are not participating at all. Um, and then you have uh, the XP points there, uh, how students are ranked. And uh, this is the next page of my leaderboard. This is the second page. Uh, what you see here are um, the XP points uh, that the students have earned, uh, the numbers and the, 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 in, in the different columns and the different row are students' XP points, um, which when they collect would raise the status of the students. And uh, what you see here, um, the, the next arrow is um, all the other activities uh, or tasks um, or challenges that I have given uh, to the students for them to complete. But again, these are all um, optional for the students. Um, so basically on this page uh, are all the details of how the students can earn uh, the XP points. I've already informed the students earlier in the semester um, how they can earn XP points and also um, how they can spend them. Um, I'd like to point out here that my students love uh, XP points and to see how uh, they like to see how they position uh, the position of their names on the leaderboards. And uh, some students are motivated enough to uh, complete this 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 optional task uh, that were given to them, uh, so that you know uh, it would increase uh, their rank. Um, so I would like to show you. This is what it looks like the 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 Google uh, sheet that I use. As you can see, um, when it comes to this is for online participation. So whenever I have live session with the students, whenever they ask questions or whenever they give feedback, um, I would give them uh, uh, XP points there. And uh, this is for Google Classroom. Whenever they post any articles that is relevant to the um, class, um, I would also give them points as well. It's not just posting. They have to comment on it as well. And uh, these are the challenges. As you can see, earlier in the semester, um, they're very eager to, to complete challenges. But as you can see, towards the end of the semester, uh, because they are already too busy with other uh, courses, uh, they have to submit other, you know, they have so many assignments due. Uh, so they feel like it's very taxing for them as well to uh, uh, take up uh, some of the challenges. All right. So this is the assignment section. I give them points um, uh, if they submit their assignments three days earlier than the due date. Um, if they submit on time, they will not get XP points. And um, events here are basically, um, you know, if the students um, are involved in outside activities, uh, uh, faculty activities or university uh, activities, they would show me proof of their participation, uh, such as certification, um, then I would give them the XP points. This is just to get them to participate in, in things outside of the uh, classroom. So... Um, now, uh, so once that is done, uh, the next step is uh, to, to uh, describe the activities uh, on how the students can earn the, the XP points. So you will need to outline this and place them on, a leader in, on, on the leaderboard uh, for transparency, basically. And, um, and this is how it looks like for uh, my, my class, okay? So these are the descriptions of the activities. So... <laughs> um, uh, you have the challenges there, uh, the task. Uh, so this this is again, like I said, for transparency, and they can see this actually. Uh, just to point out here, uh, XP points are not given for compulsory tasks, you know, such as assignments or homework or weekly submissions. No, any extra tasks they will get XP points. Okay, and uh, these are the amount of the XP points students can earn for that particular activities or for the tasks or for the challenges. 
And lastly, these are the ways XP points can be spent, uh, you know, because they've been uh, collecting it towards 14, semester, uh, for, uh, 14 weeks. Um, so throughout the semester, is, I mean, I, I only have two items there. If you have any idea what else I can put in there as redemption items, please do tell. Um, I, I'd like to remind everyone here who wishes to implement leaderboards in their classroom uh, that um, students participating in leaderboards are optional, okay? So uh, I do have some uh, teachers coming to, uh, to me and says, my student is not participating. How do I get them to participate? I, I tell them that, no, 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 these are optional, you know, um, so don't stress yourself out. Okay. All right. So what kind of uh, activities that are suitable for students? My advice is to do a small scale survey before you decide on what kind of activities or tasks that uh, they can collect XP points for and get a general idea on how your students would like to spend their XP points. Since my students are mostly adults, um, they would appreciate these this kind of rewards, uh, you know, extension of deadlines, retaking uh, assignments uh, more than uh, candies or fried chicken. So these task uh, activities uh, that I outlined here are not definite. I told my students that anything extra that they did, they think could earn them XP points, uh, they need to report to me. Uh, of course, it has to be within the same semester and I will decide if these activities are worth the XP points, such as volunteering in community services, um, taking other short courses, leading a faculty project. You know, some, I, I, I've seen some XP points is based only on grades, but my leaderboard is based on the extra mile that the students take to add knowledge or to add skills that would help them excel not only in my class but the extra effort that they take to participate in campus activities and competition community engagement uh, you know leading a faculty project the students who sit on top of this leaderboard might not be students who get A's but I believe they are the most helpful kind caring students in my class so you know some of them will come to you and oh uh, Madam, this is my certification for a community service that I did last week. So, you know, you give them XP points for that. So I love raising the status of these uh, types of students because far too often their skill set doesn't get recognition uh, that it deserves. So being a good person is important and that, that leader boards uh, rewards that. So because... I feel that grades can only get you so far. I believe as educators, our role is to also instill qualities like responsibility, creativity, um, leadership, uh, teamwork skills, social, emotional, um, political intelligence, which can be taught and nurtured indirectly. Okay, so coming back here, uh, studies have shown that without new tasks, without weekly challenges, without weekly quests uh, for students to earn XP points or rewards or badges, uh, their motivation decrease, uh, leading to lack of enjoyment. In other words, students lack motivation to engage in the learning activities as they go towards the end of the semester. So how do I maintain um, excitement and engagement uh, in my classroom? So by providing them weekly challenges, of course. So challenges um, in gaming world, they are called missions. They are called quests. So challenges are a positive gaming element where it keeps players engaged uh, to maximize their XP points and also the, the main reason why players keep playing. So in the classroom context, they could be anything from skill-based tasks to short, short quizzes, you know, to... Um, depending on the subject that you're teaching. So just remember the keywords here, all these challenges again are optional. Um, as you can see here, these are the kind of weekly challenges I set up for my students. The challenges I set for them are relevant to the subject that I'm teaching uh, or the subject that they are taking. Uh, so these challenges were posted on Google Classroom where it is easier for the students to submit their work. As you can see from this example here, uh, the subject I'm teaching for this semester is uh, communication through drama. So I would ask them to perform uh, record and submit. All right. So you can initially, um, uh, they were very, uh, how do I say, um, uh, shy to to act out and then record themselves. But then again, you have to remember, um, you know, uh, the the course outcome is that by the end of the semester, the students would have the competence, you know, they will be able to be confident in, in, in doing any drama activities. So I would give them tasks like this where they have to perform, where they have to record themselves. So they, if they're doing these kind of challenges for 14 weeks, by the end of the semester, you can see that they are the ones that are very 
lively open likes recording likes to do performance you know because of these uh, challenges um, this is another example as well um, uh, this is a, a digital skills uh, subject that I'm, I, I taught as well last semester so um, I would ask them to produce something creatively um, in digitally as well and and they have to submit so um, this is how I gamify my classes um, but uh, before I end my presentation, I, I know it's very short. Um, I know some might be wondering what happened to students who are in top five and did not want to spend their XP points from the XP store. Because, um, you know, uh, I told my students that they cannot spend their XP points outside of my classroom. What I, what I mean here is that, you know, they cannot spend it on the next semester for a different lecturer. Okay, and they cannot exchange those XP points uh, to increase their assessment grades or from one class to the next. So uh, you do have students who, who uh, do not need extended deadlines, who do not need to retake assessment. They are just awesome students, uh, uh, stellar students. And also, um, I think it's, it could be due to the only two items that I have that they could redeem. So... <laughs> What I did is that I give them treats. Um, um, early in the semester, I tell them that, um, you know, if you don't want to spend their XP points, only top five will get Starbucks vouchers from me. Um, why Starbucks? Uh, in Malaysia, the cost of one Starbucks drinks could be between 15 Malaysian ringgit to 25 Malaysian ringgit. So to them, it's like, wow. All right. So um, due to the fact that last year we were all in lockdown, I sent their vouchers through Starbucks mobile application. However, I do have students in top five who lived uh, in remote areas. So they mentioned that they don't have Starbucks there, but they have Grab. Uh, so I sent them vouchers to their Grab account instead. So um, there you go. That's how I gamify my classroom. So if you have any questions or feedback, please send them in the QR code there. Thank you for listening. Do I have questions?